We all know China's internet has too many differences compared with the global internet. For a mobile device, there's no Play Store, no GMS, no FCM. The only thing you can find on mainline China is Google ADS. But China has the largest number of internet users in the world. Billions of devices run customized systems powered by Android. So how does it work? Is there any big monopoly? Who has taken Google's place in this ecosystem? At the beginning of this video, I must tell you that China's online ecosystem is virtually built on mobile phones. Traditional websites are almost dead. I don't know the exact reason that's too complicated. People can do almost everything on their phone. Shopping, hospital appointments, and paying taxes. As a normal person, you don't need to open any web page in your whole life. You don't even need a computer. Apps and phones replaced everything. If you have used a Chinese branded phone, you should have some basic understanding of this customized Android system. But in reality, there is a big difference between the Chinese phone system you're using and the one used by the people living in China. The Chinese version doesn't have any pre-installed apps from Google, and there is a Google service in the system settings, but it is turned off by default. For for someone living in mainland China, there is no need for GMS at all. There are no Chinese apps that you can sign in with a Google account, and there are no apps that rely on Google services. Most people use the service provided by the phone brand, such as using Xiaomi and Vivo account to sync photos, calendars, passwords, etc. Your data will be tied to the phone brand, but it doesn't matter. The key to data life in China is still the phone number. Message push service. Simply put, the notification will be sent to the server first, giving applications the ability to receive messages pushed to the users whether or not the app is in the background. Almost all global Android apps use Google's FCM for push messaging. In China, things are a bit different. Chinese phones also have FCM pre-installed, but almost all phone brands have their own push service. Mi Push, Oppo Push, etc. No apps will use FCM. The most popular instant messenger app in China doesn't have access to any push service. If you kill it completely in the background, you won't get any notifications from WeChat. The FCM service pre-installed on some Chinese versions of phone is flawed. They may not receive timely notifications from the global app. Email is not necessary in China. It is only used to receive captchas for two-factor authentication. In fact, you must use your phone number or WeChat to sign up for almost all the apps in your life. And WeChat has to be registered with a phone number. Whether a natter or a formal conversation, people always use WeChat. I think it's a usage habit. China's rapid internet development came after the advent of instant messenger apps, so almost no one has the habit of using email. The most popular search engine in China is Baidu. There are a lot of search engines in China, and almost every big company wants to grab this internet track portal. On PC, they'll use all sorts of tactics, including secretly modifying your browser's homepage. It's becoming increasingly difficult to find useful information through traditional search engines in China. A significant amount of valuable content is created by users and shared on independent apps, which treats this information as a key asset. To protect this content, many of these apps, some have hundreds of millions of users, implement anti-crawling measures that prevents search engines from indexing their data. Just imagine trying to use Google to find information from YouTube and Reddit, only to realize it's not searchable at all. Just like search engines, there are many cloud storage services to choose from in the Chinese market. The key problem is that they don't have a strong ecosystem. They are just a single app, can't work with the gallery, and can't back up data from apps. If you want to get an experience similar to Google Drive, you can only buy the more expensive cloud storage system from the phone brand. And then, your data is kidnapped by these brands. Difficult decision. Chinese cloud storage services don't offer encrypted uploads and will also audit the photos and data uploaded by the user. And if there is, for example, adult content, the service provider will delete it. There is no way I can talk about whether does the same thing here, but evil people are equally bad all over the world. In China, there are still some monopolies. I mean, it's a market economy, bro. Baidu, Alibaba, and Tencent provide internet services like water and sunlight, but they are not as powerful as Google. Serving you eerily relevant ads by collecting your privacy? Chinese companies are doing the same thing. These customized Android systems state enhanced privacy protections in every major upgrade. But look at this crazy ad revenue. 
I don't believe them at all. Back to the question at the beginning, who has taken Google's place in this ecosystem? I think it's the phone number and the WeChat. The phone number and the SMS verification code prove that my data belongs to myself. WeChat is like Gmail plus WhatsApp plus PayPal plus credit card. That's how the Chinese live without Google. Hope that's useful. And don't forget to like and subscribe. This is YLab channel. See you next time.